he had ambitions to be regarded um, as a photographer. That's why it was such a Greek tragedy that on that very night when the exhibition, I think, was opening and people were buying his photographs, he was shot. <laughs> Billy Monk was really an icon of the underworld. A man who did this and that. Living on the edge, he was surviving. Besides being a bouncer, was a fantastic photographer. I called him the CEI of the 60s. You know, in these dark basements where these clubs were, where Billy Monk um, worked. The catacombs was a drawing point for so many different types of people from Cape Town society. It was a dark, dismal place that stank of piss and beer and brandy. Yeah, it was in the middle of apartheid, a place where everybody sort of just got together and had fun. Billy Monk, of course, was completely and clearly against the whole racist regime. He was a good guy, he was a bad guy. A man not to mess with. People learned to trust him. He was able to create these incredibly honest and beautiful images of people. It's not the gun that's a killer, it's the person behind it. It's the same with the camera. Billy, as was his custom, was here today and gone tomorrow. So he began, like, gone fishing. In 1979, a Cape Town photographer named Jacques de Villiers was sorting through some papers in his studio when he discovered a set of files which belonged to a one-time nightclub photographer. The reviews were very positive towards the exhibition. Billy was supposed to be on his way to go up there and have a look at his exhibition and didn't make the gig because that's when he got shot. And then the story started coming out from Coburn Street. I think there's probably a lot more to the story than we know. Like the broken telephone, you know? What's true, what isn't? He was a mystery. 